Thank you, boss, for that. The boss will be the ask you. And speaking about your boss, we are going to hear from the man of God now. He's also our national director, Reverend Dr. Benjamin Egar. He accepted the Lord at the age of 12, and his simple but genuine witness about the power of God in his life touched many around him. He attended the Cedra School Bible Church, where he served as Sunday school teacher and worship leader. Reverend Egar had the privilege of serving under the leadership Pastors Salilal Subu, Ramlochan Lachman, and Maurice Pamu. He enrolled at the Bible Institute of Theology as soon as he was able to and graduated in the year 1980. He attained his Master of Theology and Doctor of Ministry in 2003 and 2005, respectively, from Newport International University of the USA. He has pastored two prominent churches over the course of his vibrant career, which started at the Lavendale Bible Church in 1974. There, he functioned as a musician, worship leader, worker, worker, counselor, evangelist, and youth president before his appointment as assistant pastor in 1980. His appointment as senior pastor in 1984 followed the passing of his predecessor and mentor. Reverend Benjamin Hunt. He remained at Lavendale for 10 years until he obeyed the call of God to establish the work in Moha. Reverend Dr. Benjamin Egan is the founder and senior pastor of the Open Bible Church on the Rock in Moha and he has been in full ministry for over 29 years. That congregation has grown from 1994 from less than 50 to over 500 members presently. Reverend Egard has served as regional superintendent from 86 to 90 and was elected to the National Board in 1988. He also served the organization as Bible school instructor and was the assistant national director of the Bible Standard Churches of Trinidad and Tobago Incorporated from 1999 to 2011. On April 9, 2011, Reverend Egard was duly elected as a national elder director of the organization. Reverend Dr. Benjamin Egard is married to Kate Egard and enjoys 36 years of marriage. He is a father of four beautiful girls, one son, one son-in-law, and one granddaughter. He is also the spiritual father of many. Please help me welcome our national director and speaker who is going to bring the word of the Lord today. Let's stand please. Reverend Dr. Benjamin Thank you. Good evening, everyone. You may be seated for a moment. But I thank the speaker for all that he said. But I'm clear, I'm very clear in my mind that today is not about me. It really is about that young lady sitting the next day on that side. So I want you to stand now one more time with me and put your hands together one more time because it's a joy. So much. And 
and um, we have many of our other ministers in the organization who are with us today. I'd like to stand as well. And other ministers of the gospel. And our ministers and other ministers of the gospel. I, I see our lovely folks here from Woodbrook. Would you like to stand again, please? And put um, that knowledge there. Amen. Thank you. And I see Sister Ruth in front. She is one of our oldest ministers of the gospel. So the the and the rest of you, we are so glad to have you. Amen. Put your hands together for yourself. Hallelujah. Amen. My beautiful young wife is with me. Amen. I have my youth. 36 years. She keeps me young. Amen. And I'm uh, very happy to have her. I'm not always privileged to have her because she's otherwise occupied. But I was asked to speak today in this service. I'm aware that we are having another service. Let me just mention the 23rd of October or whenever the valley falls, there will be a national recognition for Sister Joyce Hill and the First Church of the Open Bible. And you will keep your ears open so you will hear more of that. This year is St. John's Expression. Today is St. John St. Times. But we'll have a national expression where we'll give all the Open Bible who she has served for so many years a chance to say thanks as well. Come on, give the Lord praise and thanks. As we give God praise and thanks. I was asked to share on this occasion, and the Lord immediately dropped in my spirit a thought, and I would like to share that thought. And I want to speak on the topic of our crowning achievement. Our crowning achievement. And the text is taken from 1 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 19 and verse 20. And Paul, this, if you take time, if you wouldn't have the scene to read the whole chapter, um, Paul takes time to talk about his relationship with the people and how much he gave himself like a, like a father the love he had for them, the way he, like a nurse and mother, and a children, and a father to a child. He talks about all of that, but then he, he comes up to the end of this chapter, and he says, um, that is 1 Thessalonians 2, 19, for what is our hope, 19 and 20? What is our hope, or joy, or crown of rejoicing? What is my crowning achievement? What will give me the greatest sense of achievement as a person for sure? And he answers. He says, are not even you who are ministered to to see you in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ when he returns. What is my crowning achievement? What will be Sister Joyce crowning achievement? Is she looking for a legacy? Is she looking for some gold rings and some, some money in a mansion on the hill somewhere in St. John's? All that can all that go. But isn't that what she's looking for? I, I think the thing, I, I think not. I had an interview with her over the phone and I, I tried to find out from her what is she looking for? What is her, like Paul, what will be my crowning achievement? He says, You, you who have ministered, you that have labored over and tried over and prayed and preached my mother, you, Remain saved. And when Jesus, the trump of God, is sound, hallelujah, and the dead in Christ shall rise. And I look around and say, Wow, here are, here are people I worked so hard to bring into the kingdom of Almighty God. They made it, hallelujah, by the grace of God. That's my crumbling achievement. I'm 
saddened to see that so many people walk away from Jesus. Don't say the joy, I think we have more backsliders in this country than anything else. You can find a backslider almost anywhere, any profession. You go in a bar, you can find them singing hymns. <laughs> they drunk themselves. The old backside. I went to a funeral recently, and the graveside he no more chorus than the Christian. I said, there goes the next backside. When you smell his mouth, full of drunk, half, afraid to fall on the grave, and he's there. There are so many backsliders. And Paul says, my crowning moment, my crown, my hope, my joy, what will cause me to rejoice more than anything else, is to know in the day of glory. And I look around, the people that got saved under my ministry, they are still saved. Amen. Come on, give the Lord praise and thanks for you. We have earthly halls of faith. I'm sure you would have heard of so many great men, sportsmen, who would have entered into the hall of faith. But the book of Hebrews speaks of a, a whole list of people who have been inducted into the hall of faith. Aha! Uh -huh. In the book of Hebrews. And I want to just take a minute with you and look at this hall of faith found in the book of Hebrews. You may not find them anywhere inducted in an earth somewhere, although there are some of them more pretty good. I think Dr. Homer has been a good footballer. He might be there somewhere. I don't know. I don't know if you will ever play cricket enough to be in the Hall of Fame. But you will find some people who have dual roles. Some are good. I heard Brother Haynes say he was a good footballer. I never saw him, so I can Three, I can't say he ain't on me. But here in the book of Hebrews, the Bible speaks of men like Abel. Hallelujah. Hebrews 11, 4 says, By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. 5, verse 5, By faith, Enoch, was translated that he should not see that first man to be raptured. When he was walking with God, God said, come home, son. He never tasted that. Another person in the hall of faith, hall of faith, excuse me, is Noah. Abraham, his name is mentioned here, was he. The Bible says when he was called to go into a place which he should have to receive of an inheritance, he obeyed and he went out not even knowing where he went. Sarah is recorded here as a mother who gave birth in her old age because they believed God. The Bible says they all died in faith, not having received the promise. But having seen them afar off, were persuaded of them, they embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on planet Earth. For they that say such things plainly declare that they seek a country, and truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. And I'm thinking of one of our greatest examples, Sister Cranmer. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, put your hands together. She suffered in the Hall of Faith. She came from a country just to work in this land. I 
as he fell in love, there she never went back. Wow, come on, put your hands together one more time. Bible says, Bible calls men like Jacob, Isaac, praise the name of the Lord, Joseph, Moses. The Bible says about Moses, verse 24. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Esteeming Brought of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. Bible talks about others, and time would fail for us to talk about all of them. Hear what it says in verse 32. And what shall I say more? For the time fail would fail for me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah and of David and Samuel and of the prophets and many others I can call men like Brother Hunt. Come on, somebody say amen. Now, and others who have gone before us. Time would fail to call their name. Who through faith subdue kingdom, run righteousness, obtain promises, stop the mouth of lions, quench the violence of fire, escape. Out of weakness were made strong, what valiant in flight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received and then raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Put your hands together, please. Hallelujah. That's the whole of it. Today I'm looking at another woman. Who would be inducted in the Hall of Faith? Come on, put your hands together, everyone. I believe she would be inducted in the Hall of Faith. Now, the Bible also says that they are crowned that we receive. When we work hard in the ministry, the Bible talks about some of the crowns that we will receive. I want to just to take a minute and mention that in the book of First Thessalonians 2.19, the Bible talks about the soul winner's crown. Can you tell me if your pastor has been a soul winner? Yes. Has your pastor been a soul winner? But the fact that you are here suggests that she's a soul winner. Hear what it says. For so what is a hope or joy or crown of rejoicing are not even you in the presence of our Lord? So she's going to wear a soul winner's crown. Somebody still a stand by to collect this crown for her. The second crown I see is the Bible talks about not only a soul winner's crown, but it talks about the crown of self denial. 1 Corinthians 9.25 says, And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we for what? Incorruptible crown. So Sister Joyce has been striving. Come on, somebody say amen now. Amen. She has had to put her body in subjection because she wants to obtain that incorruptible crown. So God has given, God has promised us a crown of rejoicing. He's promised us um, soul winner's crown, crown of self denial. He's also promised us a crown of righteousness. Second Timothy four verse, verse eight says, "Henceforth I have fought a good fight." First, first before says that I have finished my course. I've kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me, help me somebody, a crown. Righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me on that day, and not to me only, but unto all them that love His appearing. Can I suggest this is a judge going to wear some crowns? Hallelujah! But the mic can help me, please. Hallelujah! And the Bible talks about the crown of life in James verse one and verse twelve. Blessed is the man that endures temptation, for when he is tried. 
he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to them that love him. She's going to wear that crown as well. Amen. And then the Bible talks about another crown. The unshattered crown of glory. Hallelujah. First Peter 5, 4 says, And when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not to me. Clap your hands together and give the Lord praise. Amen. I believe when the battle is over, Sister Joyce will wear a crown. Hallelujah. Will you have me sing that some old timers? Yeah. When the battle is over, we shall wear a crown. We shall wear a crown. 